So our first present presenter is Bob Berenger, the director of the Schultz Holmes Memorial Library in Michigan. Uh, he's going to present on, I'm going to make you famous, raising awareness and building community on a three-inch screen. Bob, are you there? I'm here. All right. I am switching presentation control over to you. should be able to share your screen. All right, we see your screen. Uh, you're all set. All righty. Uh, I'm going to be playing some video, actually, because I mean this presentation is about making videos. So I'm going to be playing some video, and you're going to be hearing the audio through my computer. So I'm sure someone, it's as loud as it can be. So someone will tell me if it needs to be uh, quieter or there's feedback or something. Um, let me just start the slideshow. Oh, that's good. So what you should see, obviously, is um, my library's logo. This, I thought I would show you, I actually added this. I've done this live before, and I always make a disclaimer that everything looks better on the three-inch screen on Facebook when you start blowing it up on a, a, a PowerPoint presentation or something like that to, you know, a, a, a five-foot, six-foot high image uh, in, a, uh, in a conference room than it it picks up a lot more of the, uh, the, the errors and things that are inevitable with a cell phone camera. But uh, it, does look, it does look a lot better on Facebook, and it, it might look better on a, a, just a regular computer screen, too. But I guess some of you are probably in conference rooms projecting this on a screen. Uh, anyway, the, uh, let me show you this field. That's the library. Looks like it, uh, we're snowy right now, so it doesn't look like this. This is obviously a summer picture, but I thought it looked bright and uh, better, and it, and it shows the library off pretty well. But you can see we're pretty small. We, uh, Blissfield has 3,400 um, people in it. We're actually one of the few communities in Michigan that's actually showed an increase from the last census to the, to the most recent one. Um, so we're, we're, we're small, but as I like to say, we're not that small. This is Blissfield. This is beautiful downtown Blissfield. It, uh, this, is, this is pretty, pretty much it. Uh, there are, a, you know, as with most places, there are other pockets of business development at, on the edges of town. But this is, this is downtown Blissfield right here. And if you could actually see about another uh, half a block down, you would see the library. Because that's, that is where we are. We're in a residential area just off the downtown square. So, I'm going to make you famous. We'll talk about how I came up with that because that is actually key to, uh, or at least it's part of what I do and, uh, with this project. Uh, obviously, we, we, we try to make uh, the people famous who are in it. We make uh, the library famous, and we make uh, Blissville famous. So that's, that's sort of always the idea. This is a promotional effort. Um, the, it, we made the first movie, which is Blissfield Reads the Raven. Um, in response to my colleague at the Adrian Public Library, Carol Sucha. She um, was putting together a Lenaway, Lenaway County is the county we're in. She was putting together a Lenaway Reads program uh, for Halloween. She had a little bit of uh, grant money to do it. And uh, I said I'd be part of it. Well, given my nature, I put it off to about October 24th. And I um, Say, well, we got to do something. And I knew they were doing some readings of the Raven, Raven at the Crosswell Opera House, which is a big historic building in downtown Adrian. Adrian's the county seat. There are like 20,000 people there. So it's a, it's, it's a big city here. And um, I knew we didn't have a Crosswell Opera House. I did not have time to get a lot of people together to read it in one room, even at the library anyway. So I said, well, I'll take it to them. I thought about those. Uh, Sometimes they have readings of the Declaration of Independence that you see celebrities do line by line on the 4th of July. And that, that occurred to me. And so I went out and I got copies of, of the poem. And I went door to door. And I said, I'm going to make you famous. I don't really know if that came. Because I got, I, I got out of the uh, car with my cell phone and the, uh, the script. I actually made cue cards. And that's, that becomes important, too, because I found another use for the cue cards. But um, I got out of my car, and I thought, what the heck am I doing? 
I'm going to walk into people trying to do their jobs, and I'm going to ask them to read a line of a poem. And I'm sort of naturally shy anyway, and I, I just I didn't know how I was going to approach him. And the line that occurred to me for some reason, just out of the blue, was a line from a, a movie that is otherwise unremarkable. It's called Young Guns. And uh, Emilio Estevez plays Billy the Kid. And just before he kills anyone, he says, I'm going to make you famous. And so that, that's what occurred to me. And I, so that's when I walked in, and the first person I looked at, I said, I'm going to make you famous. And she actually read the third line in the poem, because I had uh, library employees who I can you know, make do things, uh, read the first two lines. And so that was easier. And then that third one um, um, is where it starts. So what we'll do now is I'll just, I'm going to show you Blissfield Reads the Raven, and that's the, that's the first one. And then we'll talk later. This takes about 10 minutes. So it's, it's, not, it's not short, but this is the longest one by far. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. I distinctly I remember it was in the week of December, and each separate dying ember brought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow. Vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow. Sorrow for the lost Lenore. For the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore. Nameless here forevermore. In the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. Tell that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating to some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor entreating, entrance at my chamber door. This is it, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating, and no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly, your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping, at my chamber door. I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I open wide the door, darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming, dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the darkness gave no token, and the only word that spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping, somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely there is something at my window lattice. Let me see then, what there at is, in this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, in this mystery explore. Tis a wind, and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when with a flirt and flutter, in there stepped the stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stop or stay he, but with mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door. Perched upon a bust of palace, just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bed, which I had my sad fancy seems smiling. By the grave and stern decorum of the countenance, if though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's plutonian shore, quoth the raven, nevermore.
Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing the bird above his chamber door. Bird or beast above the sculptured bust above his chamber door with such a name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further than he uttered, not a feather that he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. And the moral flew away from me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken, by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless, said I, what it utters is its only stock and store. Caught from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster, till his songs one burden bore. The dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore, of never, never more. But the raven still beguiling all my sad soul into smiling, straight I wheeled the cushioned seat in front of bird and bus and door. Then upon the velvet sinking. I betook myself to linking, fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of your, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gone, and ominous bird of your meant in croaking, nevermore. This I sat and gazed and guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes then burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining, that the lamp-like loaded oar. The velvet violet lining with the lamp-like loading oar, she shall press, ah, nevermore. Then he thought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, spun by seraphim, whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he has sent thee. Respite, respite, and need a penthe. From thy memories of Lenore. Quoth, oh quoth this kind Nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore. Desolate we get all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted. Tell me truly, I am poor. Is there, is there a balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven. Nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil. By that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore. Tell the soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden, it shall clasp a sainted maiden, whom the angels named Lenore. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels named Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shriek of starting. Get me back into the tempest and the night's plutonium shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my lonely lips unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from off my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, on the pallid bust of Pallas, just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming. And the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore.
So that was Westfield Reads the Raven, and that's uh, the first one that we did. And we, um, a lot of people have asked me who these people are. And, uh, no, they're not professional actors. So I just put together a very quick slideshow to show you what they do in their day jobs. So that's them. The, uh, the guy I call the voice, his name is Don Reinick, and I, I put the voice on there because he had this incredible voice, and I didn't even realize what I had until I got back, and I, I went and told, I told him, he comes in the library a lot to use the computers, and uh, I, I said, you, you get into a car and go to Hollywood now, because this is, this is the, your calling and that you've missed all your life, evidently. So the first thing you have to do when you get started doing something like this is you have to find, decide what, you, what it is you're going to read. Poems seem to work well, although if we have time, I'll show you Peter Rabbit. We did, we did that. You have to find it obvious. They're a pretty short, short story. You don't want something too long. Uh, I would say that, that The Raven is probably the limit. That, that always seems a little long to me, and certainly it was, uh, it, it was longish making it, so that it, took, it took quite a bit of time. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing, so that, that helped, that I had absolutely no preconceived notions. Um, a Holiday, obviously, I think that... All the ones we've done so far have been for a holiday. We did, we've done two on Halloween, one on Valentine's Day, and one on Easter, or one for Easter. And um, so what, I, you know, they can be seasonal. What I want to do is, is Casey at the bat for the beginning of baseball season, because Blissfield is baseball town USA. We've won seven state titles in 25 years, and, and uh, I think maybe 25, 30 straight division championships. So. It's a, it's, it's, it's a baseball town, and so I think that's, that's what I have to do next. Um, you want to find out if it's in the public domain or not. Practically anything at Project Gutenberg is. Um, you can obviously take your chances that no one's going to sue a library. I mean, take the, if, if, you, if you're showing movies in your library without a, without a site license, then you know, maybe you just take your chances. Um, Google Books is another place to go. Poetry.com is, I think, is where actually I got the copy of the copy of the Raven to print out. Um, and then you can just do a web search for for stuff. But I, I think it's it's I feel more comfortable if it's if it's in the public domain anyway. Those cue cards. I, what I did was I took and I just blew the poem up so everyone could read. A lot of times you go into places like restaurants where the light's not very good anyway. You may have people who are reading. I mean, if I, if I were reading, I would have trouble reading a book uh, in the light of a restaurant, that's for sure. And so I just blew it up so people could read better. I think that, that helps to reduce the nervousness factor of the whole situation. I mean, basically, you've got that to overcome. I mean, that's always what you've got to overcome. So I try to do preparation both to uh, help my own shyness and, and reticence about approaching people to do this and then about uh, to, to help people who may, who may be nervous about doing it. So I, I think preparation helps that. So I try to make it as easy on them as possible. So you can read line by line. You can read sentence by sentence. I think you get better flow and an understanding if you have them read a complete sentence or thought. And then, of course, some, some writers' works work, work better for that than others. 
but there are ways around it, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Then I take the complete work in for context, because sometimes people do want to know, well, what, and, and it helps them. They want to know what comes before, what comes after, what, what exactly is this sentence I'm reading? I mean, what does it mean? People will say, um, I, I have offered, I say, you want me to read it for you so that you, that you, that you know how it's supposed to be read. I, I'm um, an English teacher by, by training, really. I, I'm not trained to be a librarian. I have a PhD in English and American literature. I do not have a library degree. And I, uh, so I've seen a lot of poems read. I've read a lot of poems. I've taught a lot of poems. So I, I kind of know how they're supposed to sound. Interestingly enough, though, if people don't, don't ask uh, me to read it for them, or they say, no, I, I, you know, I got it, you, you come up with some readings that you would have never thought about. And as an English teacher, an English scholar, you actually, you, sometimes I think you find meanings in the poems that you wouldn't have seen before if someone else had read it. So this sort of spontaneous interpretation, um, you know, has some, some unexpected benefits. Um, let's see. Uh, there, I, I'm going to post, or the, the, the con conference organizers are going to post a handout that I would be giving you if this were a live uh, conference and it contains some links on it for finding um, for finding texts and uh, some other suggestions and things. I'm actually getting suggestions for texts from uh, people in Blissville, which tells me that they're engaged with the whole process. They say, you know, this this is a poem you should do next or whatever. So uh, I, I probably will try to do that. Um, you can also, those you saw in that first one, a lot of times people were just holding the cue cards. And then there are others, again, if you think about it, you saw people looking above my head, above the camera's head. That's because someone was standing on a chair behind me with, uh, with the card uh, up over my head. So we found different ways of doing it. If you take one of those loose sight uh, literature stands that you probably have in your library and just take that with you everywhere, then you can set that on the table and everybody can, uh, can read off that. But I didn't discover that until one, uh, one of the later videos. At any rate, uh, something like The Raven, we were just talking about uh, some poets work, it works better, the line-by-line -line stuff will work better with some poets than with others. Uh, this is Edgar Allan Poe. You can see you have nice, wonderful little breaks. We actually did two lines because I thought, I looked at the length of the poem, it was 108 lines, and I said, I will never get 108 people to do this in two days. So I got, I, I cut it in half, so it ended up being uh, 54 lines. 54 people I got to do it in two days. And, um, uh, but you can see the Edgar Allan Poe breaks really well with either commas or periods at the end of every single. Uh, line. So this is actually two lines. Obviously, it's it's converted for a for a larger cue card. But this is an actual cue card that I use. So that so that works out real easy. When we got to the uh, the Valentine's Day stuff, we used Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Shakespeare worked really well. To Shakespeare, we did we had the shake we had the men read a Shakespearean sonnet, and we uh, uh, we had them read uh, Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day, and we had the women read. Uh, sonnets from Portuguese, How Do I Love You, by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Elizabeth Barrett Browning, while not, not a modern poet, is certainly much more modern than Shakespeare or, or even that ground of in her, in her style. Uh, Shakespeare's great, because Shakespeare just is you know, short, choppy, pithy uh, lines. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? In. Thou art more lovely and more temperate. In. You know, so it, it never, it, you don't have to worry about the, the end of the line is the end of the thought. So it, it's great. Uh, Elizabeth Barrett Browning is different. You can see that the, the sentences and the thoughts go across many lines. This is just the three lines. And, and so you have to find a way to, uh, it, otherwise you're just going to have, you know, like six people read the poem, <laughs> which, you know, seems to sort of defeat the purpose. So uh, what we do there, what I do then is I have, I just, I, first of all, I cast it as prose because it's just easier to read. I'm going to say, this is a sentence, read this sentence. And so then I had, actually three people, because it's three lines, I had three people read the entire thing. And then you cut it up when you're editing. And I'm just going to show you that really quick. And then you'll see the whole, the whole poem being read later. Oops. We'll try again. 
I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being an ideal grace. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being an ideal grace. I love thee to the depths and the breadth and the height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the end of being in ideal grace. And this is the end. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the end of being in ideal grace. Oops. I love Sorry. thee to... So anyway, you have to decide um, whether you want to announce the recording or not. And there are, there are two ways of looking at that. Blissfield, even, even though we've done this uh, several times now, is still not quite ready to uh, just come in and volunteer to do it. <laughs> so I have, to, uh, I have to ambush them. And ambush recording has, certainly has its place because you, can, you go in and I think people, um, if I'm standing right in front of them, it's hard for them to say no because I'll you know, pout and stuff. And, and so that, that, that helps. If you announce the recording, it can be an event itself, and you can get a press release in the paper, which is always one of my big goals is to get a press release in the paper. So if I can, it's a lot bigger. I always say if you can get the, make the library unignorable, if you make it seem like lots of stuff is going on at the library, then that's just about as good as lots of stuff going on at the library. Um, so uh, you have to, if you're going to announce it, though, you have to rely on people wanting to do it and being willing to come and do it. So you can just, uh, I, I ambushed the people who were in the library, except for the library board president who I had, who I said, come in and do this, you have to, it's for the library. What sort of library board president would you be if you didn't? And uh, even, I even ambushed my son and my wife, although you can probably tell my son didn't have to be asked twice. So the Rotarians didn't really have to be asked twice either. They, they, were, they were pretty good about it. They, they're always eager to help with the program. Um, but sometimes people, you have to talk, talk them into it. And, you, and, and part of that is preparation. I always say it's, it's like the uh, play movie, Glenn, Gary Glenn Ross, they always said, ABC, always be closing. And I think it's, it's important not to, be, not to appear rushed, but you're prepared, but you're always moving them toward that one thing, and that's reading a line of a poem on the, on, uh, the screen. It's always, it's just one line. It's just two lines, whatever, and it's, you don't have to read the whole thing. I'll read it for you and tell you how to do it. I always say, we will, we will do this until you, until you are happy with it, and I can play it back to them on the phone, and that, that always helps. I have had people, though, especially with that first one, I had, I had a couple of people who, because I didn't know what I was doing and I was having trouble, technical trouble with the phone or something like that, I, uh, uh, who backed out before I could get it done. So I, I always try to try to get it uh, prepared. Uh, while we're talking about the phone, you have a couple of choices. You, you can use your phone, which is free. You do ha I, I've had some issues with where, if I go into a building with wireless, it's constantly trying to latch on to the wireless. Obviously, you can turn that off. Um, you have limited ability to adjust focus, lighting, sound, uh, so that's that that's trouble. Obviously, you should turn the phone off if you're because that would be sort of embarrassing. It never actually happened, but I, I assumed that it probably would eventually. The, the phone would go off while I was filming somebody. Uh, you can get a camcorder for a couple hundred dollars, and they're really good. And so, if you have money in your library budget at all, uh, you can get a pretty good camcorder um, that's intended to do the job. It's not going to be trying to latch onto your wireless. You have lots of uh, uh, ability to uh, to adjust uh, focus, lighting, sound, and stuff like that. It obviously does cost money, and then you don't you don't have the wireless capability for to connect it, which you, it's, it's convenient when you're trying to connect it to uh, to your computer or to, to upload this to Facebook or whatever, which is ultimately the uh, point. But those that, that's just something to consider. When you go in, you turn off the phone or the wireless. You make sure you have batteries. You have memory cards for the phone or the, or the camera. A tripod will help, and you'll see that when we get to Annabelle Lee. Um, especially, it's like my, my phone had no problems adjusting for my hand shaking, which, which happens, because like I said, I'm, I'm not terribly uh, comfortable with this myself. Um, 
but it, it, the phone was much more sensitive. I mean, I'm sorry, the, the camera was much more sensitive. Once I changed to the camera, it's much more sensitive. So next time I do it, I'm taking a tripod. And tripods are also like you can get all sorts of, you get a whole uh, accessory pack for your camera for $25, which will include a tripod, uh, both a tabletop tripod and a floor, a tripod that sits on the floor for like $25, along with some other stuff, carrying cases and things, for like $25. So certainly a, a reasonable investment because these are, you can use the camera to film all sorts of things, not just you can, all sorts of library programs and stuff. And you may already have one in the library anyway. Um, it's not just for these, these videos, but then I think it's a good promotional investment. You take the cue cards in a folder. I, I try to keep everything together. Uh, but, uh, you take a book or a full copy of the, of the work you're reading. You take pins for autographs. We're going to have everybody who reads autograph the cue card they read from. And we're going to use that later. If you want some sort of backdrop, I, I've tried using um, we, we used a, a styrofoam tombstone, I think, one time. But generally speaking, I'm filming too close for you to see much in the background anyway. But it, it, if you wanted to do it, I, I think for Peter Rabbit, we had an a Easter basket with a bunny and an egg in it and everything. So you see that sometimes in some of the shots for Peter Rabbit. It does help if you're going from place to place. You always, I, I always thought that would be cool to be, if you have that same prop, no matter where you are, you have that same prop. Um, then I say, use your, your game face. I have to psych myself up to do this, so it, you just kind of, you know, you, so I, I always feel like I have to uh, kind of uh, be on, but that's what you take with you. You want to allow enough time. You want to allow enough time for settling in, for chit-chatting, for making the, the performers feel comfortable. Um, allow enough time for rehearsal. Let, let them read it without filming at all. Allow time for the, to, to retake it because I'm sure you noticed when we did the um, when we did the Raven. There was lots of noise in the background. That's fine. I mean, if you're going to go into a working business, a restaurant, particularly, it's, there's going to be noise in the background, and that's that's okay. That's part. That's one of the things that music will help you with. But um, sometimes, you know, if someone drops a bunch of dishes or something, you just assume to redo that, or the person who's reading might want to redo it, and so you just give them enough time to do all these things. Uh, allow more time for kids. You have to get permission for kids, too. Um, I use a list rather than individual forms, and so I just have the uh, child's name. Children are difficult because you, you, have, you, have to, you have to have the parent there with them so, um, in order to, do the, to get permission. So I just do this, uh, this permission list rather than permission forms. It's easier to carry around since I, since I already have all those uh, cue cards and everything. I, uh, I, tend to lose stuff if I had too many uh, permission forms. It's also good for in, in the library as well. Uh, I've been trying to film Twas the Night for, for Christmas uh, for a couple of years now, but I, it's hard for me to get enough kids in, you know, to, I had to announce that because I needed them to come to the library with parents to give me permission, and I've had some difficulty getting that done. So uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep doing it, though. We'll eventually get it done. The kids may be Twenty by the time we get it finished, but uh, at least we'll get it done. Um, get everything in order because I filmed a lot of this out of order because I wanted it to move around a little bit. I, I actually had a dental appointment, <laughs> so you see all those, those the, the shots in the dentist office. But I spread them out so that so that it wasn't just you know in the dentist office for uh, for six lines straight. Uh, you can fix some errors. You can't fix a lot of them, especially you know what what goes on the cell phone stays on the cell phone. So there's not much you can do. You create titles. And that makes everyone and, and every place a star. That makes that the whole idea is to kind of that filmed on location, Blissville, Michigan is, is really part of it. You can give thanks to people, and, and obviously you're promoting the library. Use the library logo. It's all we try to brand everything around here, so that's the that's that's part of it. Editing software. Windows Live Movie Maker is absolutely free. If it didn't come with your computer, you can download it from the Microsoft website. That's what I edited that first one. In fact, that's what I've edited them all with, um, as Windows Live Movie Maker. Someone told me about Adobe Production Premium, which was very cheap at TechSoup. If you're all familiar with TechSoup, um, there's a steeper learning curve. It's much more complicated software, and I simply have not had time to sit down and learn it. It looks like there'll be a lot, a lot more stuff you can do with it, uh, and, and eventually I will, I will do it. But uh, as for now, Live Movie Maker has served my purposes, and, and uh, 
it's free, which is always good. You put in music. I think music helps create flow from disconnected images. You're moving from place to place. You're, you're changing speakers. You need something that, that promotes continuity. It also helps to promote continuity because the background noise is going to change constantly. So you, you just, I, I think it feels just much more complete with, with the music there. It's fuller. Um, it's Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. I got to send this man some money because I have used his music in everything I've done. It's on. It's uh, completely royalty-free music on his website. He suggests donations. Um, it's always good. Another website for royalty-free music is Partners in Rhyme. Links to both of those places are on this, this handout that will be available to you. And then this is uh, this is what we did for Valentine's Day. This is the two the competing sonnets. Oops, no, it's not. We'll try it again. Do shake the darling buds of May. And summer's least hath all too short a day. At some time too hot the eye of heaven shines. And often is the gold complexion dim. And every fair from fair sometimes declines. By chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not be. Nor lose possession of that fair thou owest. Nor shall death break thou wanderest in his shade. When in eternal minds to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe, their eyes can see. So long as this, and this gives life to thee. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach. In feeling out of sight for the end of being in ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day in his most quiet night, like sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with the passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost sins. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. <laughs> So anyway, once you get it edited, you want to post it on Facebook. And that's uh, actually fairly easy. Um, if, if you're familiar with Facebook at all, you post it just like you post a, a, a photo or, or anything. It's, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, I promote the video then. I like to tell people, because one, one, of the, one of the purposes of this was to put content on our Facebook page, it's sort of content-based marketing to put content on a Facebook page that would draw people to it. So they weren't just, they would come, then they would like the Facebook page, then they would get updates on library programs and services. But you had to actually have something to get them there in the first place, especially people who didn't normally come to the library or who weren't already on the library, weren't already, already friending the library's Facebook page. So I sent out a mass email. Uh, this is one word of caution, but it's, it's of course, someone who did not follow this word of caution is the reason I have so many email addresses to send it to. When you, when you send mass emails, you should always use blind carbon copy because if you don't, you stick everybody's email address in, in, the, uh, in the two line 
and I'm going to steal all those addresses. And that's what I did. I, I didn't have a lot of addresses in my address book when I got started. Fortunately, I uh, was on the mass within the address book of someone who did, and someone who had a, a practically everybody in town, practically everybody in the county. Once I got once I got a, a few more uh, in that address book, so I'm sending out something like 1,500 um, mass emails now. And um, anyway, you just post those addresses and put them in your own address book, and you send them out. And I'm, of course, not condoning this probably immoral and, and maybe illegal act. Um, you want to get it in the paper, say, tell, tell them uh, our paper is very good about just running simple notices from the library. We have a weekly, actually a weekly at the library column, which has library programs and uh, a, a sample of new materials and things in the library every week. And it's just a weekly paper. Anyway, but so every issue we have we have that in there anyway. So you want to get, get that in the live, get that in the paper because this like as if it is an event because it is. Um, we we increased our we had something like twenty four people because we had just started the Facebook page a few months before we had like twenty four people who liked our Facebook page, and by the end of that weekend it went up on I think the, on Friday I think Halloween was on Friday that year and it went up on Friday and by Monday. We had like 103, so it 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 did really well that that first uh, that first time. Now, of course, it, it slowed it slowed down, but but it did really well. Um, then we put up images, still images. I had my actually my student worker put up still images, uh, screenshots from the people reading the the poem and um, and their autographs, those autographed cue cards in the library, and that's what it looked like. We actually have these doors to the auditorium where I'm sitting now that we don't use. There's actually a, a booth in front of it. Anyway, so uh, we just we just use that space to, uh, to stick it up there. This is actually for Annabelle Lee. And you can see that's that's where it is in the library. And then up close, you can see how everybody signed it. And they're just the screenshots from the thing. And this is Annabelle Lee. But I'm thinking that maybe we don't have uh, time to do this. And we will just, uh, perhaps I should take questions at this point. Or I should answer questions. Yeah, you yeah. Bob, you still got a, 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 about ten minutes. Um, how how long is this last video? Oh, it's not as long as the others. It's about as long. It's not. It's a little longer than the last one, but not as long as the first one. Yeah, I, I think we got enough time. I got. Here we go. Let me close this. It was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabelle. And this maiden, she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. Mm -hmm. I was a child and she was a child in this kingdom by the sea. So we loved with the love that was more than love, I and my Annabelle Lee. With the love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and her. And this was the reason that long ago, in this kingdom by the sea, the wind blew out of a cloud, chilling my beautiful Annabelle Lee. So that her high-born kinsmen came and bore her away from me. To shut her up in a sepulcher in this kingdom by the sea. The angels not half so happy in heaven went envying her and me. Yes, that was the reason, as all men know, in this kingdom by the sea. That the wind came out of the cloud by night, chilling and killing my Annabelle Lee. But our love was stronger by far than the love of those who were older than we. Of many far wiser than we. And neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea can ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. For the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. And the stars never rise, but I feel the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. And so all the night tide I lie down by the side. Of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride. In the sepulchre there by the sea, in her tomb by the sounding sea.
and you see in, in that one uh, particularly, it, it becomes a, a, a way to promote blissful businesses too. People often, or I'll direct them to stand in front of uh, a, a logo or some, something that, that identifies the business in, in the background. And then when uh, I post it on Facebook, I provide links to the, to the businesses of all the people who, who performed. So it becomes sort of a, a promotional effort, an economic development effort too which uh, in Michigan we can use. So um, it's just one of the things we try to do there. One of the services we provide at the library. <laughs> that's all. That's, that's what I have. That's, if anybody has questions, I'd be happy to, to take them. Yeah, I, I think we got a few questions coming in from the audience. So mm -hmm. uh, Krista, you want to pass those along? Yes, we do have some comments and questions that came in. Um, one comment just about um, I guess equipment that someone says that they recently um, got a flip video camera, one of those nice little ones, um, via TechSoup.org. TechSoup is a great website for get for libraries and nonprofits to get discounted um, in equipment and uh, Microsoft products and things. Um, Sixty dollars for six cameras. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I think because they've stopped making them. Yeah. So exactly. they're they're trying to sell them off. <laughs> so just. Um, Looking, if you're looking yeah. to, to get them fixed or whatever, I mean, of course, if they're ten dollars a piece, who cares? But um, that, I, ha I used I used flip video for one of the one of the ones you didn't see, um, and I was I was not too happy with the sound. Mm. Well, okay. There, that's actually why I upgraded to the other camera. But but the, they're they're great. I mean, they're certainly great for inside the library stuff. And at six dollars, you could give you could give, give them to patrons and let them go out and film stuff, and then bring it back and edit it together. So I mean, it's, that's certainly worth it for that one. Yeah, check them out. Yeah. Okay. Um, a couple of permission form questions. Um, one is, um, will will the um, example of the form be in the handouts that you were talking about? Yes. Okay. Great. You will. So we'll get that. And um, are the only people that you have signed the permission form? The parents, or do you have everyone sign it? No, I just I, 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 I my assumption is that I speak to adults that they understand that I tell them it's going to be on our Facebook page, but I'm not going to put it on YouTube or anything like that. Although once it gets onto the web, there's I have very little control over it at that point. Mm -hmm. I I suspect adults understand that, uh, but I would never put someone's child on the internet without asking. So that's 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 basically the thing there. We don't generally ask for parents' permission for library programs or to use their pictures in the library and stuff like that. We never have. Now, if if you feel the need to to get permission for everybody, I, I would encourage you to do so. Do what you're comfortable with. Okay. Um, another question about um, dealing with um, your actors. How did you handle any mispronunciations, and, or did you? Well, I love that. Pretty much, I, I uh, there were there were a couple there were a couple there in that first one, and I uh, I essentially said this is you know this is this is folk art, <laughs> it's it's not supposed to be perfect. So I had to kind of I had to put my own tendency to be anal at bay and and uh, and just let it let it go. Nice. Um, uh, how long did the editing take for these kind of things? It takes, and actually, uh, the handouts that, I, that I'm going to put up are actually broken down to time and money. Uh, and so what I, the edit, the edit takes, as I say, the, the filming takes more time than you think, and the editing takes less time than you think. I would say it, the editing took me an average of three, and, three to four hours, and that includes, um, well, that doesn't include putting the music in. I, I, uh, so maybe if you, if you talk about putting the music in, then maybe five or six hours. But um, the, the music takes a long takes a long time for me to choose, just because there's so much of it, and I, I want I want the right thing, you know, and, and, and so that that takes me a while to choose. Um, but that you know, I, I will say this too: it takes me that much time, and I know absolutely nothing about this. I mean, I had never mm -hmm. I had never edited anything like this, so it's. It's uh, it takes that much time to to learn it from scratch and and get it done. Okay. Um, let's see. We'll time for one more. Did I'm looking to see what we have here. Um, now I know you you got someone asked a question which we can kind of answer in the context of the other questions. Wanted to know like 
someone came in late to our to our conference this morning. Wanted to know, um, did you who did you ask to participate? Um, obviously not staff. And yes, if you go back and watch on the video, and we'll have the PowerPoint presentation available. It was actually a whole bunch of um, uh, people from the town, business owners and whatnot. And someone has a question related to that. Actually, did you have to worry about featuring one business over another in your community? <laughs> Well, it's, a, like a, it's a pretty small town. Um, I, I, I didn't, and, and uh, maybe because I didn't think to worry about it. Um, and I, you know, I'll try to get them next time. I, I mean, I think that's the, what I try to do in the library, too. Sometimes you, you, you go out and you get people to, to sponsor a program or something in the library, so you get a big poster for that sponsor up in the library, and then you know, the other insurance agent comes in and sees that poster, and I say, wow. You know, I've got another program coming up. You've got an opportunity to do it too. So I just try. I, I just spread it, spread it around. If, if it was just a one-shot thing, then I guess it might be a bigger deal. But we plan to do this for a while, so I'll cover everybody eventually. Okay, great. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, that's almost all our questions. Um, if we didn't get to yours, sorry. You know, we do have a limited time here. Um, just a couple of responses to some of the just comments on here. Um, one person, one just last, like um. Kudos for you. Says I love. Someone says I love this. It's like a living read poster. Oh, yeah. Which is a nice description. Great way yeah. to put it. Um, and someone did ask the um, powerpoints and the presentations will all be available afterwards yep. for everyone to get a hold of. So it'll be on the website along with our recordings. Every all of our speakers' presentations will be available, so you'll be able to have them after the fact. And um, my email address will be on the the handout that I that I that you post when you post the PowerPoint. So if you have questions that weren't answered, I'd be, or you know, think of questions along the way, I'd be happy to respond. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Bob, for, for, for kicking off the show this morning. That was wonderful. Uh, video is something we, we like to promote around here, and this was sort of a, a project I hadn't thought of. Uh, so it's another, another way of, of looking at creating video for the library. So thank you very much.